there have been very few people in wrestling history that were as controversial as Mohammed Hassan. He debuted during a period of global tension after 9-11 and his character was designed to challenge stereotypes but despite the original intentions behind the gimmick, the character's storyline quickly became problematic. In the end, there was a massive backlash from not just the fans but from the mainstream media too. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the story of Mohammed Hassan and examining why WWE had to eventually perform a character assassination in order to save themselves from cancellation. Mark Capane was the man behind the gimmick. He was an upstate New York native of Italian heritage and incredibly, he had absolutely no relation to the Middle East. In 2002, he trained to become a wrestler in OVW, which was the WWE's feeder promotion at the time. They wanted to introduce an Arab-American character to the roster and Jim Cornette suggested Capane for the job. He was soon paired up with manager Sean Daivari, who was selected thanks to his ability to speak Persian. It was on an episode of Raw in December 2004 where the men made their main roster debut. Mick Foley was in the ring and he just showed a highlight package of WWE's trip to Baghdad to support the American troops when the men interrupted. Hassan got on the mic and said that he used to blindly support the troops just like Foley and that he also used to support the USA right up until 9-11. Hassan's focus in all of his early promos was on the discrimination that he faced as an Arab American in the modern world. He spoke about being stereotyped, how public discrimination led to his uncle's business shutting down and how both he and Daivari now got accosted by airport security despite being innocent and having done nothing wrong. Hassan said that he was as American as everyone else but other Americans had let him and his family down by treating them with suspicion in the era of Middle Eastern terrorism. To begin with, Hassan was a really smart and nuanced character, although giving him the camel clutch as a finisher was a bit obvious. Over the following weeks, Hassan's frustration started to grow and his promos became more violent, and there was controversy when Hassan praised Allah in the ring which caused Muslim American groups to complain. WWE positioned the men very clearly as heels. It was obvious that they were the bad guys. And as far as Hassan is concerned, he did a great job of delivering the promos with hatred in his voice. He made it so easy to believe in the character. During the 2005 Royal Rumble, Hassan and Daivari were both ganged up on by both the heel and the babyface wrestlers until they were eliminated. Then Hassan and Davari started to cause more trouble by attacking other wrestlers. At WrestleMania 21, for example, they targeted Eugene until Hulk Hogan came out to help. The night after on Raw, they took down Shawn Michaels, which led to a match where Daivari helped Hassan get a win over him unexpectedly. At Backlash in May, Michaels and Hogan joined forces and beat Hassan and Daivari. Daivari was the one in the match who got pinned, so Hassan still hadn't lost by pinfall at this point. Hassan then got into rivalries with Intercontinental Champion Shelton Benjamin and he fought with Batista and John Cena. There were rumours at the time that Hassan was going to beat Batista at SummerSlam to become the World Heavyweight Champion but those plans did end up changing. In just a matter of months, Hassan had made a huge impact in WWE. He'd been involved with the biggest names on the roster, Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Batista, John Cena. On top of that, he'd been in the conversation to become the new World Heavyweight Champion. It was an incredible push. On SmackDown, Hassan cut an anti-Independence Day promo before being confronted by the dead man. Daivari then hit The Undertaker with a chair 
before getting chokeslammed. The week after, Teddy Long booked a number one contenders match between Hassan and The Undertaker for the Great American Bash pay-per-view. He then placed Daivari in a match against The Undertaker for that night. Daivari was defeated, but Hassan then started to prey on the ramp. Suddenly, five men in ski masks entered the ring, armed with clubs and piano wire, and they attacked The Undertaker. They beat on him and choked him out before Hassan put him in the camel clutch. It was a visceral and violent twist in the story of Muhammad Hassan, whose character had now evolved into what appeared to be an actual terrorist. On Thursday, the 7th of July, real terrorists struck the city of London, killing and injuring hundreds of real people. The Smackdown segment with the attack on The Undertaker was cut out of the broadcast in Europe. However, WWE decided to keep it in the US edit of Smackdown. They ended up getting a huge number of complaints from both the fans and the network. The storyline also captured mainstream attention. It got featured in the New York Post, TV Guide, Variety and many others. But despite the backlash, WWE tried to defend its decision to show the angle. WWE spokesman Gary Davis said that while they felt bad about the timing of the segment, they weren't trying to depict a terrorist attack, although he understood how some viewers might see it as such. SmackDown executive producer Kevin Dunn defended the segment too, saying, We're very proud of our product. We try and be sensitive with everything we portray, but there's got to be protagonists and antagonists on our TV shows. We just happen to reflect the politics of the world sometimes, especially with these Arab American characters. They even had Hassan cut a promo on their website, where they seemed to backpedal somewhat. In the promo, Hassan reiterated his Arab American identity, and how Americans were unjustly labelling him as a terrorist. He even ended up calling out Don Kaplan, who wrote for the New York Post about the situation, calling out how Kaplan described the masked men as Arabs in ski masks. But UPN wasn't interested. They told WWE that they didn't want the character of Mohammed Hassan on their network ever again. In an interview years later, Mark Capani said the WWE wanted to fight against the backlash. Johnny Ace told Sean and I what was going on. Initially, we were going to fight it. We were going to do publicity, talk shows, the promo in the ring. But eventually we realised if we fought it, we still weren't welcome. On Spike, which was showing Raw at the time, or UPN, which was showing Smackdown. We knew we'd be very limited. I don't remember exactly how I found out, but within a few weeks of the Undertaker segment, we knew the character could not come back to WWE TV. And so all future plans for Hassan and Daivari were immediately cancelled. They killed the gimmick dead. At the Great American Bash, the Undertaker battered Hassan before giving him the last ride, putting an end to the character once and for all. Mark Capani was released from his contract in September 2005. He left the wrestling business altogether, entering a career in teaching instead. The big question that I've always wondered, would he have become a long-term main event superstar on the roster? In my opinion, whether the London terrorist attack had occurred or not, WWE were pushing the character too far. The character was far more interesting in its original form. He was already getting nuclear heat from the fans. As far as Capani is concerned, he was clearly a talented wrestler. And I'm not just talking about his in-ring work. When he was cutting those promos, you absolutely believed the gimmick despite him actually being an Italian-American from upstate New York. It's a real shame that this was his one and only shot at the big time, but considering he was only on the roster for nine months, he made one heck of an impact, and we'll never forget the name, Mohammed Hassan. <laughs>